Hey guys, so I know that ClickUp can be complicated. I don't know how many times I wanted to switch back to Asana and, or Trello just because I couldn't get the hang of ClickUp. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some tips and tricks to make ClickUp a lot easier and simpler to use. Hey guys, it's Winda here and I am the blogger behind Windowful.com. So I help creative planners like you find functional and productive ways to use your planners and systems so that you can get more things done. So in this video, we are talking about ClickUp, which is a project management tool that I use every day for all areas of my life. But sometimes it can be a little complicated, especially if you are just getting started. Um, it might overwhelm you and you might just want to quit, but please don't because ClickUp has changed my life. Ever since I started using it, I have been so much more productive. I've been um, getting so much more things done and it's just not, it's not just in my business as well. I use it a lot for my personal life and I'm never forgetting anything and I just love it so much. Um, and yeah, so let's just get started with this video. So. All right guys, so... The very first tip I have for making ClickUp easier to use is using the custom fields for your stages instead of the statuses. So you see here, this is my statuses right now. So I have it set up as stages and you don't get that check mark. And sometimes you just wanna check it off. So if you use statuses, then you'll get all of these options whereas if you were to just use to do and done you can get that check mark so instead of having um, these as statuses i highly suggest you use a custom field and use the drop down so let me show you guys the way i do it now so this is grouped by my youtube video process so it was the same exact steps except i made a drop down for it and then I created my statuses to just as to do and done instead. And it just makes it a lot easier, especially if you use subtasks so that you can just check it off, set it to close and you just have that check mark. Uh, tip number two is to separate your categories. So I like to plan in sections. So I have categories for every part of my business and life and I separate it into different spaces. So I have my business, my services and products, my content creation, home and family, and then things that are personal to me only. And then when I plan, I put it into the list that it belongs. So I have like master lists for each of these areas. And then when I want to um, plan, it makes it a lot easier to find. So that goes, that brings me to tip number three, which is to use the everything space. So, so we have the option to look at everything and um, in all of our spaces all together. And, you know, at first it can be quite, it can look quite crazy because it's everything. But the way that I have it filtered makes it so that it creates my own weekly planner. So you see here, it looks pretty nice and organized. If I didn't have that filter, it would look like chaos. So I highly suggest you use the everything um, board. Um, you can see here, I pinned it as my weekly board. So I created a board and then I grouped it by due date and then I used this filter. So you, you just go to add a filter and you put where due date is the next seven days. So that gives me this kind of weekly planner. It gives me like overdue tasks, things I need to do today, um, things I need to do tomorrow, and then also for the, for the next uh, couple of weeks as well, or next couple of days. So we have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then future. So that's tip number three. Uh, just plan everything using your everything space. The next tip I have is using your favorites. So you can add any list to your favorites bar. So this is my favorites bar up top here, and I have it pinned to the top. Usually it is on the side like this. Usually it's right here above your spaces. But if you click on this little pin, 
it'll pin it to the very top. And I like just having my most used um, list right on top. So to add it, you simply just go to the list that you want to add and then add to favorites. Okay, and the next tip I have is to use the task tray. So things that you are working on, just put them, just minimize them. You can just simply add it to your task tray so that you are constantly reminded to be working on it. So you, you just minimize this task using that. And it just, you know, helps you to stay focused on what you need to work on that day. Okay, so the new way is to use the lineup feature. So if you go to your home, you'll see that you can add items to lineup. So that's kind of similar to the task tray, um, just to help you stay focused on your daily tasks. Another way that you can make ClickUp easier is by using the notepad. So I love using the notepad. So if you go here, you'll see notepad. So you could also just hit P. And I love using this for like daily brain dumps, a to buy list, a daily done list, um, and any ideas I have on the fly. And the cool thing about it is that if you open it up, um, you can easily just highlight it and then create a new task with it. And then you can add it to a specific list later. So this just makes it super fast and easy. Uh, the Google Chrome extension is amazing that'll probably have to be another video but you can do so much with it but i love using the notepad just for quick little ideas and tasks the other thing that i wanted to talk about is um, using recurring tasks so let's go to my routines um, instead of cluttering up your click up i highly suggest that when you set recurring tasks that instead of making a new task you just update the status. So let me show you guys an example here. So for my weekly cleaning, I have it all set to recur every week. But let me show you my settings. So you see here it recurs weekly, but instead of creating a new task, so it recurs weekly on schedule. That means every Wednesday, that's when I will be decluttering and dusting. So it'll keep um, coming, showing up popping up every Wednesday. Instead of creating a new task, I just put update status to to do so that it'll just open it back up and kind of bring it back without having multiple copies of declutter and dusting. Because if I don't check it off one week, I don't want to have, you know, double declutter and dusting. So I highly suggest when you are doing that, instead of creating a new task, you just update it, update the status. The next tip I have is to switch up the views. So ClickUp has a lot of different views. The one I'm using right now is um, the modern layout but or the clean layout. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's separated. So we have spaces here and then our folders here. Um, we also have the simple, simple layout. And this is just everything all on one sidebar. Show you guys what that looks like. So just have spaces, dashboards, and docs, and then probably your goals and everything. So that's the simple layout. So yeah, you can you know play around with um, all the different views. Let me show you guys the, so you just go to layout, size, and style, and then we have modern, which is clean, no separation of spaces. So with the clean, we, so we have our spaces and then we have like a toggle so that we can see our folders underneath. So you can, you know, play around with that, um, switch it up and whatever makes it simple and easy for you to see. Okay, so another way that you can make ClickUp easier to use is just by disabling some of the Click Apps. So if you click on your settings and click on Click Apps, so you'll see all of the features that um, ClickUp has. So if it's just you um, and you don't really work with anybody, then um, you probably don't need a lot of these features. Um, you can turn on and off a lot of the things. Um, one of the ones that I th 
think that you should really keep is the custom fields. So there's a lot in ClickUp and you don't need to use all of it. Um, another one I would suggest you keep is the priority and then the quick create statuses. Yeah, there's a lot in here and you don't really need all of it um, if you don't want, but I like that it's there in case, you know, I do want to explore and learn more. So that's um, one of the ways that you can make click up um, more simple. And the last thing I want to talk about um, is just the font. So if you go into your settings, you can actually change the font of um, ClickUp. So in order to change the font um, to make it look clean the way I have it, you simply just go into your settings and just click on settings. And then right here, global font support. So it's in my settings and then you go to global font support. So the way I have it, it's turned on and it just gives you that kind of cleaner look. But if I were to turn it off, so this is what the default would look like. Okay, so I don't know, it's a very small notice, but you see here, it kind of looks a little bit wider, um, more rounded. Um, I feel like it's a lot more noticeable on the mobile app. But yeah, if you want to change that to the cleaner look, then just, you know, go back into settings and turn on that global font settings. All right, so I turned it back on. And now you see, this is what the font looks like with it on. It's just a little bit more narrow um, and cleaner looking. So yeah, those are my um, tips to make ClickUp a lot easier and more simple to use. Um, if you're just getting started, I hope this video kind of made it a little bit easier for you to um, use ClickUp. Um, ClickUp is an awesome tool. It can be intimidating at first, but um, once you get the hang of it, you will love the customizations that you can do with it. Um, it's just, if you like, you know, using different planner templates, this is kind of the same thing, um, except you can use different views, like you can view it in a board, you can use it, view it in different list ways. Um, and it's just an amazing tool. So yeah, I hope you guys will take the time to learn ClickUp and give it a chance because you will love it just as I do. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.